just a little bit uh, over a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. Big choice that has now completely changed your life. So I want to share that because I know there's going to be little nuggets of information for people watching that are are just going to be like, oh my gosh, yes, Erin did this and I resonate with that. And that's going to help me to transform my own life, especially now. So I think, let's oh, I hope so. Know. Like if I, if anything that I say hits anyone out there, then that's wonderful. Yeah, that's our goal here today. And I just want to share your story. So I think let's just dive in and I want to start from the beginning. So what was your life like before we met and before you did feel for fat loss a little over a year ago? So it would have been September ish, maybe late August going into September of uh, 2019 and I was, I was just at the point in my life where I definitely was carrying extra weight. So here we are with vanity and obviously health. And I reached out to a girlfriend of mine. She's kind of like a sister and she had done fuel for fat loss and she's really good at challenging me on stuff. And she said, you know, I've done this program. It's wonderful. And I think that it's really up your alley. And she gave me all of your information. And then she said, you know, it's, it's this many weeks and this is kind of the guideline of it and you know you're restricted on certain things and you don't have alcohol for six weeks and I was like whoa 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 <laughs> you can pump the brakes because I I mean I love drinking wine I love a nice glass of red cabernet and or a glass or three and I remember <laughs> saying to her I was like oh like six weeks without drinking wine are you kidding me and I said to her I was like oh well I mean I'll do it but then I'm, I'm still gonna have a glass of wine at night like what's the big deal and she basically <laughs> said she's like dude dude if you can't do this for six weeks without you know having a glass of wine then that's something that you should you know really think about and I was like yeah well of course I can do it so I um, mean at this point I was I mean I love exercising I like what it does like endorphin wise and for my for my head even more so than my body yeah um but, you know, eating relatively well, but what I didn't realize at the time is that um, I was probably over drinking and definitely not probably, but definitely over drinking. And that I think is definitely why I had the extra pounds on. So I think it was about halfway through the cleanse where I just, I was like, God, I feel good. Like I feel energized and I felt really clear and I had way more energy, which is, I mean, it's everything to have to have the energy and like waking up extra early and having really good sleeps. And I thought, this is, this is the most amazing cleanse. This is great. I didn't see weight loss right away, which you talk about, you don't always. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of like hit me one day where I was like, I'm not hungover. And I'm feeling really bright and really clear. And wine obviously has a lot of sugar in it. And that was kind of like, I was eating very pure and clean. And I just kind of had this revelation where I was like, I think that I drink too much and I'm feeling amazing. And it was kind of this like incredible gift that was given. So towards the end of the, the cleanse, I actually talked to my friend and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with the fundamental principles, which I also just going back to your program. I love how you reinvigorated my healthy relationship with carbohydrates and how to have them in a balanced way. I love hearing that. And by the way, like just to backtrack a little bit, so many people, I, I get emails all the time. Like I can't start your program right away because you know, my birthday's coming up or my son's birthday or my grandma's friends, friends, friend, and I'm going to be having a glass of wine and you know, I, I can't not have my glass of wine. Right. So it's right. Like, yeah, we just, you know, and, and, and I, I get this cause I used to, um, fall into that as well. So I, I, you're not the only one and I'm so glad that you like just did it, you know, and just like overcame it and you did it. And then hearing about your healthy carb relationship, because I feel like, um, as a coach, I step in a lot of times and I, I'm like the carb police. I'm like, your carbs were too low. <laughs> you know, we got yeah. to because um, mainstream media and, and many of the diets that are out there on the market right now, including things like keto, we're told that a high fat diet, low carb diet is the stuff that's going to give us results. Now, the thing about that is it's not going to give us long term results. It's going to um, shoot you of energy. You're going to have zero energy throughout your mm-hmm. day. Um, and it's, it's a nightmare, um, uh, for women in particular and our hormones. So, you know, I'm so glad that that healthy relationship with carbs was reinvigorated for you and it, it, you lose the weight, you released 20 pounds and you kept it off having carbs. Yeah. That's, yes. Yeah. Yes. 
And that, and like, honestly, you feel satiated. Like you're not depriving yourself of something. Like even just to have a nice bowl of rice or like a rice pasta or like potatoes or whatever. I feel like, I almost feel like I'm cheating, but I do, I have since the cleanse, I've kept my macros. I don't like, I'm not religiously punching everything in, but I'm like, okay, I've had, you know, quite a bit of fat today and just trying to keep everything balanced. So the, um, definitely like, I mean, in carbs, I find that I, I maintain like a lower weight when I do have a healthy amount of carbs. I tend to have them earlier in the day, but the real weight loss, I mean, this is kind of why we're here to talk. And I've said this to friends is like in the, in the course of a year. So I decided to quit drinking and I just, you know, and I was very conscious about it. And then you do have those, you know, the Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving happened right after, and you're really good on your program for like setting up and we can talk about a game plan, but, but about like your birthday party, my first trip with the girls to Palm Springs, where we're not going to, you know, I'm not going to be day drinking in the pool on a floaty. Um, so it was, it, it, I, I, I quit for a year and I wasn't super, super conscious of it, but I suddenly started noticing, I'm like, oh my God, I'm fitting in. I have this like section of my closet where I have all my skinny clothes that I didn't fit into. And I was like, I can fit into all these clothes. And it happened. And really the only thing that was a major change was not having the wine. And like you said, I lost 20 pounds in a year and I continued my exercise regime. I did have like my healthy carbs and try to maintain my macros. But really for me, it was like not drinking wine. That was it. And not only, so we're talking, you know, there's vanity, there's the weight loss, but there's also internal health, uh, external health. My skin got brighter. Um, again, way more energy financially. When you go out for dinner, you're not spending an arm and a leg on, on wine and martinis or, or whatever that is. So like, you it's- know- just the other day, after talking to you the other day, I a friend reached out um, who's in the program right now, and she says, Simone, before this program, I'm, I was spending $25 a day on alcohol. $25 a day. Like, yeah, it's easy for you. Significant amount of alcohol. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so absolutely, um, it's it's not good on, on many <laughs> levels. Um, but I want to talk about, like, you know, how did you manage, first of all, to remove it for the first 30 days? And, like, you know, how did how did you get, how did you get around that from someone who was like, you know, Rosé all day was your motto to like right. for 30 days. How did you do it? And you, you bring up an interesting point because it's a lot of the mental, like in society. And I'm, and like, as I'm talking to whoever's listening here, I'm by no means qualified to be like an addiction specialist. This is simply my journey, but it did take like, um, like a game plan and being like, Oh, like that, I read also a wonderful book called This Naked Mind, and it really kind of looks at alcohol as a science. Like it's a, legitimately it's a poison that we put into our bodies and the effects of that. It can cause, you know, depression and anxiety and poor eating habits the next day was my big one because I would eat healthy, but then the next morning, if you're not feeling, you know, amazing, a cheeseburger is going to look a lot better than a nice salad. 100%, 100%. 100%, 100%. So it was, it was the first 30 days. The, the cleanse was great because I had some accountability and structure. So I was like, okay, I'm not allowed to do this. I can follow this. After that, I was like, Ooh, okay. How do I go into life, into situations, into Thanksgivings, into with not having alcohol. So it was a matter of um, making the choice and committing to it. And I think that the biggest thing for me was that it was a positive. It wasn't like, Oh, like I'm, I'm not going to have this wonderful friend that I had in my life, this one, this thing, because really it was doing me no favors. So looking at it as more like, oh my God, I'm getting my life back. And ha- first of all, having that kind of an attitude of like, and it is kind of, it's kind of magical, like depending and whatever, whoever's listening, whatever your own personal relationship with alcohol is, mm-hmm. is completely yours. It's whatever works for you. There's incredible programs out there like Alcoholics Anonymous and I mean, having therapy or there's the 30 day sobriety guide, which has wonderful medicine, whatever your deal is and how, whatever your relationship is completely yours. But for me, it was like, okay, this is kind of like, this is kind of awesome. So the next step for me was enrolling my friends. And I'm, you know, people always say like, does it change your friends? Are they your relationships? And in fact, at this point in my life, and I have to like say thank you to my family and friends, nothing changed. My relationships, in fact, got a lot better. Wow. because they're also at the point in their life where, you know, a lot of them have kids, they're either pregnant or maybe they're recovered. Or um, there's also like this sober curious thing happening. There's a lot of really incredible non-alcoholic substitutes out there. So enrolling yeah. my friends, yeah, like enrolling my friends and family and then having the, the other part of the game plan was like, okay, 
when I'm going into the situation, I'm going on a date, I'm going out with the girls. Um, for me, it's a lot of the ritual. So as long as I have a drink in my hand, mm-hmm. whatever it is, if it's kombucha or if it's like, ah. I love, I now love non-alcoholic beer. I never drank beer, but like, I love me an NA, we call them. And having that in and just like continually sticking with your plan and being like, is this serving my life? And yes, it is. And for me, it was very hard for me to have just one glass of wine. That was a problem. I was like, delicious, full of sugar. I feel buzzy. Let's have three. And then the next day it just kind of robs you of all that. Yeah. And, uh, and then the- like it's a serious topic, you know, and, and especially, I think the reason why we, we wanted to talk about this and like, just be really like open and have just a conversation yeah about alcohol in general right now is because uh, we're going through kind of like a, a just a, a different time. There's a global pandemic. We really are. Um, people are uh, stressed as it is, anxious as it is. And some of the coping mechanisms that are popular are, you know, drinking a glass of wine at the end of the day, just to cope with that extra stress and overwhelm that we're feeling. And, um, you know, liquor sales, for example, in uh, BC alone are up 40% since COVID hit. So, you know, this is one of the things that a lot of us are turning to and struggling with right now as a result for all the things that you mentioned, right? Like waking up the next day and feeling worse, feeling guilty Mm -hmm. and ashamed and like, oh my gosh, I don't feel good right now. I'm going to have that cheeseburger, which makes you feel even worse or that muffin or right. Like, um, and then you're gaining weight, you're sitting on the couch more, it's leading to this lifestyle. So it's not even mm-hmm. the alcohol, really, it's like this lifestyle around it, that is not really you. And not 100% where you want to be. So it's a question of like, okay, let's just become conscious of where we're at right now. And not necessarily becoming sober, if that's not your goal. It's like, totally, let's have a plan. Yeah. Let's have a plan around this. You know, are we going to cut down to and I, like, as um, a coach, I will never encourage you to have alcohol for the reasons that you said, Aaron, it is a poison. Our, our body sees it as a toxin. If uh, fat loss is your goal, it lowers your metabolism by 73% for several hours after having a drink. It's not going to help. Um, right. So I'm not going to encourage you, but I will say that y- you can have a plan around it and just, you know, ask yourself like, how much should I be having and get strategic mm-hmm. about it? Because if you're strategic about it, then you'll still meet your goals. You won't feel crappy the next day. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just going to benefit you all the way around. So like, I want to hundred percent and like yeah. the pandemic and like you said, like having that glass of wine at night, I know there's so many jokes on Instagram and stuff and not to poo poo humor, but like about like, it's, it's my, it's, you know, mummy wine, wine time, whatever at like noon when you're there homeschooling your kids and I get it. But like, like you said, it's never, whatever you're trying to numb out from, in my experience, or escape from work, stress, whatever, by using alcohol to numb out. And we use a bunch of things to numb out, like, you know, drugs and a a lot of different things. Bachelorette right now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's better than, (laughs) but then that that stuff, whatever you're trying to run away from it inevitably, it's still right there in the morning and if you have to meet it with a hangover when you're feeling less like it's not it's really it's not serving you and again if you can have you know a lot of my friends they'll have like a a glass of wine with dinner and they'll nurse it and I always (laughs) I look at them like how are you doing that because I would just be like yum 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 so if you can have the glass of wine great but I did read this wonderful thing that said 100% is easy like committing to something and saying this is not for me. 99% is like purgatory. It's hard. It's, it's, it's very hard for me to just have a glass of wine and be like, that was wonderful. Now I'm going to have a cup of tea. I'm like, that was my experience with it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So having like, definitely having the, the game plan and the strategy and people are worried that it's going to change their life in a negative way. And just from my experience, it has only made my relationships far more strong. And my friends are like, they either didn't care or were totally supportive. It did not change our relationships. In fact, our relationships are now more like day-based, hiking, walking, and everything is, is a lot more clear. Like the connections that I have, it's, it's kind of magical. Like it's, it's very exciting. I know. And you know, I just love, like, I can just see it in your face. Like you just look fresh and excited about life. And, you know, I, I, I just, I love your story. It's so, so different. Um, 
parties. I want to talk about parties. So how would okay. you navigate them? You had the support from your friends. You went in mm -hmm. with, with a drink. So a mocktail or I think, mm -hmm. was there anything, you said sparkling water, I think at one point. I mean, let's be honest, sparkling water. There's funny things online where it's like, you go to a party and they're like, oh, you don't drink. Would you like some water or sparkling? You're like, <laughs> like make it fun for me. I'm like, oh, water's water. Like I, um, I will say that I do have, like, I love the um, elderflower tonic you can get, which does have a bit of sugar in it. But I find if I just have one, because I'm not getting that buzzy, like, yum, 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 yeah. I can have one and done and maintain my my weight. I love kombucha. I love a good non-alcoholic beer. And, like, this sobriety movement is so big that there's a lot of, like, craft breweries that are coming out with really yes. amazing yes. tasting non-alcoholic beers. Totally. The majority of restaurants you go to, you're like, what are your non-alcoholic options? And they now have like, they have an incredible, I mean, I had my first time going out in Los Angeles drinking. I was, I went out with a girlfriend and she wasn't drinking as well. And we're, uh, we were like, well, let's get a fancy drink. So we asked, it was still $16 for a mocktail, mocktail but it was no alcohol. <laughs> no alcohol. I was like, what? But the, I mean, that's not normally the case, but like I, um, if I go, like I went uh, for dinner the other night and uh, to a friend's and I bring my non-alcoholic beer, she always says kombucha for me. Um, just, and I had a Christmas party last year when we were allowed to have big parties and it was probably a hundred people. And I had two stations set up because it was my first time hosting sober. And I have a lot of friends that are in the program, a lot of friends that are pregnant, a lot of friends that are done with drink, whatever they're, you know, whatever, wherever yeah. you're at. So I had two stations like Grinch Juice Boozy, Grinch Juice Non Boozy. And, and uh, you can get non-alcoholic wines, which are kind of gross. But if you want to have, um, on my sobriety date, I had a glass of non-alcoholic wine just because it, it felt, and nobody knew that I wasn't drinking because I was drinking non-alcoholic wine. And they're like, oh, Aaron's drinking wine, whatever. But I will say that of these two stations I had set up with 100 people, even some of my sober friends were going over to the non-alcoholic and being like, oh, what's this? And like, this is a fun yes. drink. And they could drive home safely, yes. wake up feeling great. And again, you know, if you are going to have that alcoholic drink, because I will never tell you not to, but like have that strategy, have that plan, um, have that alcoholic drink and then switch to a mocktail or oh, sparkling water and it you know no one will notice I think for a lot of us we're stuck on well what are people gonna think if I'm like I, I hear actually I've had so many emails Aaron that say you know um if I don't drink at this party everybody's gonna wonder if I'm pregnant and I'm like well stop interesting what people think you know like yeah. at the end of the day, no one's gonna notice most of us are just so like worried about what people are thinking about us that we actually are not like judging anybody else right it's so true so, people don't you know, think about you nearly as much as you think they think yeah, about you. And if you're yeah. around a group of people that are judging you for not drinking, maybe you should question the people you're hanging out with. A hundred percent. You hit the nail on the head. And that's where that support from your friends and your family comes into play. And I think something else you, you chatted about um, a few days ago when we got together was um, got together on Zoom, um, just to be clear, <laughs> yeah. during COVID. Um, but so we talked about how um, you uh, received a ton of support, um, but you you actually told people and you made that announcement. Mm -hmm. And this was like that extra accountability for you. A, a thousand, like a, a billion thousand percent. And you know this, if you have like an exercise buddy where you're like, see you at yoga at 6 a.m., you got to show up because someone's waiting for you, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, and it is... You and I also discussed like how taboo drinking can be and how it, it, it's a very emotional thing for people to talk about. I didn't talk about it for a year, like via social media or anything until yeah. I kind of got my like legging underneath me and was like, what is all this about? And who am I without alcohol in my life? And it, it's, it was actually, it's a very beautiful experience for me, which is why I do enjoy sharing it. Um, but I, I think a big thing is too, it's like, it's taboo and people saying like why aren't you drinking it's funny when you read this naked mind you almost want to say back to them like why are you drinking like why are you putting mm. paying a lot of money to damage your health and your relationships and your financing I'm never going to say that obviously yeah, I'm not going to yeah. be on a and I have a lot of friends that still drink and I, I date people that drink and you know what I mean as long as they have it under control it's 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 fine it doesn't bother me um, but just to get back to a huge thing I think with any big change in your life is enrolling those people that you love around you 
so that they know. So there's that accountability. And so you just speak it out loud and you put it into the atmosphere and you're like, this is something I'm going to commit to is important for me. And that goes for.